Okay, so let's start our interview, a very um, um, spontaneous interview, and I love yeah. that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Diane, uh, to be with me today. And we had a um, um, passionate conversation just before the okay okay i want to interview you so first of all thank you for being here thank you for being as spontaneous as i am and i would like to know where are you from what do you do okay so i'm from uh, ontario canada i'm from sudbury in the north more north but i live in southern ontario now right between toronto and niagara falls in brantford ontario and um i actually am a communication and sex expert and uh, I actually started off being a brain expert working with people who had executive function issues people with ADHD mild autism uh, you know different different um, problems coming up in their life because of different things in the brain mostly that's, executive that's, functions okay that's that's very interesting uh, I think it's one theme Maybe another time I could interview you on that because I find that very interesting as well. But I don't really see what, what is the... So we, we discussed just before that you are a teacher as well. Uh, we discussed yeah. about parenting, how complicated it was yeah. or it is with uh, homeschooling and parenting and so on. So I really loved uh, your concepts. Maybe we can come back to that afterwards. Mm -hmm. Um, but I have just one question now. So brain expert and mm -hmm. sex expert. So yeah. how do you connect the dots? Yeah. And if you, be, if you go right from the beginning, I was a missionary in my twenties and thirties. And then in my thirties, I became a teacher. I taught for years and I still teach part-time just two mornings a week because I, I enjoy the kids. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so and then I started my business eight years ago and worked mostly as a, you know, an expert in executive functions, but it all relates. And that's the thing. Uh, I have a gerontology degree, which is the study of aging and good quality life from birth to death. Okay. And everything fits in there. So to me, traveling around, meeting people, I really got to see cultures, religions, uh, you know, all kinds of different styles of living, diversity, really. And at the core of everybody is the need to be accepted and loved for who we are. And if you look at the brain patterns, depending on if we've been told we're awesome all our life, if we've had structure, if we're okay, if, you know, if we're in a place where we're okay, people tell us we're okay. And the challenges are just that it's a challenge we're going to find a solution we're going to learn from it and we're going to grow and go then everything's fine yeah. but if you come from a place where there was you know like in my case i'll use myself as an example i was born into a family with a lot of violence mm -hmm. my mom wasn't thrilled to have another child the others were 10 12 and 14 and they were finally she could keep them pretty safe and now she had another baby and you know like there was a lot of challenges and I, I wasn't taught regular, normal things. I mostly was on my own, you know? However, there's an advantage to that. I got to use my imagination and create and develop to, you know, have to discover the world and figure it out myself, mm. which brought me through a lot, a lot of stuff, you know? And in all of that, it's made me a really awesome therapist because I relate to a yeah, lot exactly. of people. You have this and it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter where they come from or what they're going through. I know that everybody has the solutions within them. My oh, job I love is that. To bring out the right questions and to be there and hold a safe space so that they can come out with everything. Yeah. And they can let it out and they can figure it out, you know? I, it's and exactly what I, how I see things. It's uh, that's yeah. why I'm a lot into communication as well, because yes. I think with communication, we can help people uh, to help them to know and to see that they have the solution. Yeah, we just and they're not broken and there's nothing yeah. wrong with them. And even children, it's, they have the solution, right? Yes, it's that, you know, society or our family or at school, somebody has told us there's something wrong with us. And now we're worried and we're wanting to find the, what's wrong with us. And sometimes we create more problems in ourselves than we need to. So, yeah. uh, you know, but so in my work, communication became crucial, right? Because 
in order to be able to heal, you need to be able to say to whoever's keeping you back or holding you down, hey, I'm working on myself and I'm not going to take this anymore, you know? So I need you to respect me. And here are some of the things that you could do to help very nicely. So it just has to be a conversation. There doesn't have to be a confrontation, which a lot of people are afraid of, yeah. but there can definitely be a conversation. So you got to get people there and then they got to be able to communicate. And now when I work with people with ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, I have it. I suffered with it. My four children have it. You know, I have two children who are autistic, my two middle kids. So I've been through that. I didn't know. And I never made education the, and the end all of everything. I did. I say to them, do your best. I could tell they struggled. And I, I was always brilliant in school, never had to study and always got really great grades. I, I studying was nothing. As long as I was there and I heard it, I was good. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. My kids were not like that. It was a whole different ball game. You know, one of them could study and study and she was avid that she was going to get this and she would work four times as hard as anybody else. And she was lucky to get a C, yeah. so you know, how, and she'd how, be so how, upset. How do you do or how did you do, did you do that she can keep her self-confidence? Because it's what I see with a lot of yeah. children, even if they are good. So they don't, uh, they are not self-confident. They think they are not good enough. So, yeah. and it's not true. Lots of that. And adults too. Parents, I bet you lots of the parents here, they think they're not good enough. Yeah. And I went through that. I used to feel sorry for my kids that they had me as a mother because I didn't know what else to do. I would think, oh, it seems to me another mother would understand what you're supposed to do here. But, you know, I didn't know. And I was almost 40 when I realized I had ADHD and so did my kids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I thought, good, I'm going to go home and find uh, somebody who can help us with this and we'll be okay. Well, it took me 12 years to find help. 12 years of suffering and struggling and understanding better the problem now, but not knowing how to manage it or do something different. And so, you know, by the time I found help, my kids were grown. Do you mm. think they want their mother telling them how to change things? No, but a lot of other people needed the help. And that's what got me really going. And then, you know, working with uh, adults first, and then people were wanting to bring their kids. Now I have a gift with kids and I've worked with kids all my life. I can feel them. I can, I can sense them. If even like parents have said, you know, when you watch her work with your kids, it's like they're in an energetic bubble. Mm. You can't touch it. You don't want to move it. It's phenomenal. Like it's fascinating. And I never knew that was a special gift. I just thought that that's just, you know, the way it is, but you know, through other people, I realize that that's a special gift. So I really relate well to kids and I can understand them without them saying much, you know? So I've been, uh, you know, some of the parents have said that I've been like a bridge for them mm -hmm. to understanding their children, which really made me feel like, wow, that's really awesome. Uh, however, as I worked more and more with families, because you can't work with kids without working with their parents, because exactly. if the parents don't want to make the changes, then the little kid's going to be trying for nothing. Exactly. So I had to work with the parents. And as I got to working with parents, I realized that parents where there's two people working and they have kids and they're trying to hold everything together, often they're so unsatisfied in their life. Yeah. And it goes right back to the core of their sexual desires are not yeah. met. Okay. No, and like I, I, had, I, get I saw so much stuff. I was like, so, and then, you know, they're dealing with kids who have like a lot of energy or who are brilliant. I see so many brilliant minds and the parents are limited in their imagination because they have been, you know, uh, told, oh no, you're a grown up now. You're not supposed to play, be responsible and all that. Exactly. I just want to tell your parents and I hope you don't mind, but bullshit on that. <laughs> bullshit. You are a human being first. The art of being human is all about from birth to life to death. There are going to be challenges. You decide if they're big or small, period. And you know what? Fun is power. Yes. So the more you yes. play along the way, the better you're going to be able to deal with your stuff. Yeah. And 
challenges, you get to focus on what you want because what you focus on grows. So you get to decide, am I going to focus on the problem or am I going to, you know, ask myself, what am I thinking? What am I feeling? Let's find three or four solutions to this and pick mm -hmm. the one that goes better with who I am. Yeah, so we can come back then what we say just before doing the interview. So you told me that you have two questions you ask your uh, your clients and I do have kind of the same, not exactly the same, uh -huh. but uh, it's kind of the same principle. Um, so what um, what are the questions you ask? So the first well, one... Well, I'd like to ask, yeah. what are your problems? And write them all down. Tell me all the things that you're having problems with right? You can probably write me a big list, right? <laughs> yes. So and then I like to know, so my okay, children, are, my boss, my, uh, my weight, my, my sex life, <laughs> my sex life, right? Yeah. 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 And then I want you to write down the solutions you found for each of those problems. So the solutions, the best solution or how, how should I go there? Yeah. Just think, well, first of all, you have to ask yourself, what am I thinking about this? You know, maybe you're thinking, uh, you know, let's take, let's take, for example, and I'm going to use this because a lot of my clients really struggle to make decisions. And mm -hmm. a lot of, I see a lot of people, they don't trust themselves to make good decisions. Yes. They're asking for advice and opinions. Mm -hmm. And I always say, that's a dangerous place yes. to go because <laughs> whatever worked for someone else, you know, Tony Robbins is a great coach for a lot of people, but you know, I took a few of his stuff just to see, you know, what does that do for me? Because he promises that if you want to be one of his coaches, you can make millions like he does and all mm. this stuff. But you know what? I don't want to be Tony Robbins. Mm. I want to be Diane Delina. Exactly. And I don't have, what Tony Robbins has because he was gifted with that to use it for the betterment of the world. Yeah. I was yeah. gifted with something different exactly. to use for betterment of it's the world. It's what I wanted to say. So you right? you are you you are different. You have your uniqueness, your strengths, and he has his. So it's no yes. point to try to be um elephant if you no. are um um a dog or whatever. So it's just completely different. Yes. And like I say this because parents need to get, it doesn't matter how good it looks at their house. Yes. You have no clue. Like I've had clients who have, like they have money, their kids are well-dressed, they're educated. They're like, you know, they haven't slept together or touched each other in six years. They're so unhappy, but they look like this great family. Yeah, you know? I love what you're saying. Now, smart yeah. for them to come see me because they can now they're going to learn how to touch again and how to enjoy yeah. their life and how yeah. to have sex and satisfy themselves and each other, right? Yeah. But I mean, it all goes together. Like, you know how a lot of people like to take, you know, I don't know if you've seen the life wheel. Probably you have, right? Mm -hmm. The life wheel. Yeah. It's like a wheel with pie, pie um, sections. And each one represents a part of life. Mm -hmm. And they ask you, how is this on a scale of one to 10? How mm -hmm. is your work, your, your career, your, yeah. your finances, yeah. your relationship? Yeah. You know, I your, work in, uh, uh, on like, 12, 12, 12 areas. Right. I have in my, but, uh, but, and a lot of times I see this, there's no mention of sex. Mm. Or there's a part on sex and you, like, you, you, you number it and they skim over it. Nobody really stops there to say, okay, what's going on in your sex life? And how could you bring that number up just by one? Mm -hmm. The most, most, like the most horrible thing that I hear from people is that they never talk to each other about their sex life. They oh. never talk about what they would like, their desires, if they're happy. Mm -hmm. they, they just, some people, they just go through the motions. They have the same few things they do and it's satisfying enough to mm -hmm. hear that satisfying enough. You know, one would like to try new things. Sometimes the other one wouldn't, they don't, you know, so they just don't talk about it because they're, they're afraid to be shut down or to make it worse or, or just to be rejected. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So it impacts everything in your life. If you are not your true erotic self, and I'm going to tell you this, and it's really true. The way we do sex is the way we do life. And the way we do life is the way we do sex. And when I watch people now, I can tell what their sexual blueprint is. 
By the way they eat, by the Um, way they walk, by the way they hold themselves, by the way they interact with people. I I always say the way people drive on the street is the way they are at life. (laughs) (laughs) But but you do it differently. It's the way they are in the bedroom. It's the way they are at life. And and, uh, I'm just thinking right now um, with me and my husband and so on. Yeah. Yeah, I could see some <laughs> some parallel, you see, some how we are uh, in our bedroom and how we are in our life. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, anyway, but back to the question, exactly. it's like if you're if you're focused on problems, just remember that what you focus on grows. If all you focus on are problems and you're complaining and you're going on and you're, oh, woe is me. And oh, this is so horrible. This COVID thing, I can't believe it. And my kids are home and they're driving me nuts and that's what you're going to get more of because that's what you're putting in your brain and your brain wants you to succeed whatever you tell it it's going to do it yeah so if you're telling it that that's life that's what your brain's going to be satisfied yeah Yeah. it's not going to be starting to work on solutions yeah because you're not giving it anything to solve yeah. You're just saying we're just going to keep complaining about these problems. Mm. And I, I, I really agree with you. So what I say always is what you focus on expands. So it's exactly the same thing. And I, what I find interesting as well is when you ask, okay, do a list of your programs. So, so no, without program, we can do a list of our program. And then, okay, now do a list of solutions like, okay, what do you, what do you mean? How should I do and so on? So that exactly. means that we are not trained to be focused on solution. We are trained to be focused on problems. Absolutely. And, uh, and that's sad. the problem. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? If when you study the brain, the one thing that keeps coming up is our brain will actually um, engage with negativity way more, more. than with positivity. Yeah. So yeah. we have to, take it out and put positive things in, Yeah. right? We have to do that with our kids too. Yeah. If you're, you know, one of my, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this for your viewers. Okay, parents, are you listening? Cause this is really huge, <laughs> right? <laughs> this is like a big one. This is a big one, okay? If you are accusing, blaming, criticizing, comparing, those are the, the four main relationship killers, sex life killers, they are killers in every relationship, everyone. You know, I have clients come see me with serious problems, have a hard time having sex with their partner, or having them touch them. And I say, what's going on? And the more we dig, almost always comes up, the partner has been critical of the person's body. Mm -hmm. so and sometimes it's an issue from childhood Mm -hmm. you know and I've seen this myself okay I've been married more than once and one of my husbands was a very mean nasty man mean didn't start off that way he was awesome everybody loved him and thought I was such a lucky woman to be marrying this man high up in the church you know works for the city yeah oh amazing man (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Four days after we got married, he changed his mind about every single thing that we had planned, Ooh. everything. Now I've sold my house. I've moved my two of my, I still had two kids at home, two of them at home. And I'm thinking, what do I do with this? And, you know, I am solution oriented. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to just keep going. Maybe it's because we just got married. He's a little off. Like, you know, you try to reason it in your head you're making excuses really and you're going on with stories right and we do that we make up stories to deal with things yeah right so anyway my long story short is he at some point and you know this was just I was planning to leave but you know you have to work it out he wouldn't give me access to the money even mine so and you know long like it's it's it was a crazy I was with him five years It got better year two and three, and then all of a sudden it got really worse. So I had to go. But there was a point near the end, I have uh, my youngest daughter's a little heavy, right? She's heavier. And so his son is very small. He would come home with treats and stuff and say to her, you can't have any, you're too heavy. Mm. That was when I started going, you know what, buddy, you can do things to me and I can try to work it out, but don't mess with my kids. Don't mess with my kids, you know? Well, 
But that could definitely impact my daughter's sex life when she's older. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. I see this a lot. So you say, so don't blame, don't accuse. And what yeah, the ABCs, I call them the ABCs. Accuse, blame, criticize, and compare. Uh, because, criticize and I and see so many people who compare their children. Yes. You know, yes. well, you're not like your brother. and They're not supposed to be like exactly. their sister <laughs> or their brother. <laughs> exactly. Each one of them is their own individual. Yeah. Each one of them has their strengths and weaknesses, and each one of them will need you in a different way. That's why two parents are easier than one. Yeah. Because maybe your child needs something that the other parent is better at. Yeah. You know, and I, I talk about this with couples. Stop doing it to each other, too. If whatever you see your kids doing, this is, I used to love this. I would go into the house and I would just sit around and play with the kids and, and, you know, snoop a little bit because I'm seeing like, what do we need to reorganize, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes it was house systems. Sometimes it was food. Sometimes it was actually communication stuff like, but I'm there to watch and to see where I can help. And I would see the kids, you know, sometimes even hitting each other and stuff. And I'd say, hey, who hits who in your family? Mom or dad? Yeah. Oh, mom was hitting dad the other day. Dad, the kids are doing what you're doing. Exactly. I can tell how you relate because I can see it in your kids. I agree. So when so I have, I say yeah. that parents, we are leader by example. So it's, they are not doing what we say. They completely take what we do actually, and who we are. Actually, Christelle, did you know that they only retain 10% of what we say? Yeah. The whole, the rest of the 90% is all seeing what we do, mm. yeah. doing what we do. Yeah. So if you're going around judging, complaining and stuff, and you're frustrated because your kids are doing it, hey, they're their mirror. They're your mirror. If you don't like what your kids are doing, change what you're doing. Mm. That's really the big thing yeah right? it's it's as well it's the message i i i do uh our give and i have a program for parents only for parents to recenter themselves about themselves to see what kind of strength they have to see what matters to them as a person not as a parent partner or whatever but we to find back the um, uh, the strengths to find back what matters to find back their direction what they want to uh, to see in their life not the program but the the big picture and then when they are strong enough again because that builds self-confidence as well so yeah I'm not yeah. like the other mom but indeed it's because I'm not meant to be so I meant to be me <laughs> and that's it yeah. uh, and maybe what the other does is good and maybe I can take a part of it or not because it just not sweet my life but that's fine it's not comparing all the time but it's more sharing and, and yes. listening and um yes and, yeah and that's yes connecting. and I always say I always like to say you know there's a difference between asking for advice and asking for someone's story and mm -hmm. I often will say you know when you want to know something ask them say how did you do this then you get their story and there might be something in there that you can pick and choose that will help you, but there mm. might not be. Yeah. But at least you've listened to their story. You've yeah. done them a favor because people typically enjoy saying their story. Yeah. And sometimes if they haven't done it often, they're learning from telling their story. I agree. Right. Yeah. And then if you did get something from it, good. And if you didn't, well, at least you've made a connection with that person because they probably appreciate yeah. that you wanted to hear their story. I love that too. Yeah. Ask for the story and not necessarily ask for advice. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. And I think too, it makes that then you don't feel so bad that, oh, you're not doing it that way. This is just their story. Exact. Exact. Yeah. And you're, you, yeah, it's not necessarily the right thing for you. So yeah. Uh, I fully agree with that. So thank you very much for taking the time to share your experiences, to share your stories and uh, and to give us some, some advice, some nice questions. So really don't blame, don't accuse, don't criticize, don't compare, don't focus on the problem, but do a list of the problem and then put some solutions around them. Yeah. Uh, it might be and, creative and solutions. I, just, I want to really really make you think of this okay it's what am i thinking 
What am I feeling? Think... So many times I ask people their feelings and they give me more thoughts. I agree. <laughs> feelings, there's a feelings wheel. You can upload like on Google feelings wheel. Mm. There's some in every language, mm. you know, and it'll give you an idea of, okay, the main feelings like happy, sad, bad, they go into other feelings. So yes. are you feeling deflated? Are you feeling maybe you're dehydrated? Drinking water changes everything in your life, two to three liters a day, but definitely feel it in your body. Mm. Often, if you're not sure of a decision, you can sit down and close your eyes and think of the, the, the thing you're, that your, your problem is and feel it in your body. And if it doesn't feel good in your body, it's not a good decision for you. Uh, it's exactly your body what I will have lie. done. It's exactly your, what... your thoughts will mm. tell you all kinds of stories, but your body won't lie. Yes. Yeah. Sit there and feel it. Do you feel discomfort? Do you yeah. feel a burning? Do you feel yeah. a pain? I love That's that you're telling you something, right? I love that you bring teach that your up. Children. Because teach it's, your children um, to do. It's the um, I, I did a meditation session yesterday evening with some of my customers and it's exactly what we have done. So taking awesome. a problem and feeling it and, and finding a solution or listening to a solution inside of our body. And uh, indeed, it's something that we definitely can, uh, can share with our children. Yes. Thank you very so much. Thank you for having me. And I hope it was helpful. Yes, I hope so. I, I mean, so if, if they look Leave at comments. The let yes. us know what helped you <laughs> yeah and anyway i will i will um uh, under the video i will put your link and then okay. they can they can um, see what you do and because you told me as well that you have done a lot of video um about how to um uh to to uh to put system in the house and so on with the children and so on so i can i can mm -hmm. give links and uh, i hope it's okay. going to help and connect it's always what i say yes. connect with the experts connect with the people and Absolutely. because we are uh here for that yeah and i can be found as coach diane b on so on instagram linkedin diane delina and on facebook coach diane great. b great yeah Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.